All righty, good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Holy smokes. Uh, very super, super pumped to see all the, the names on here. I wish I could say all the faces. Um, we would need a nice big screen. Uh, quick, quick, quick thing. Uh, the reason why um, I do these things is to create a little bit of fun. You guys get a nice, good, sweaty Thanksgiving workout. Uh, you know, get up, get your day going. I also want, personally, I'm not gonna lie, I wanna have a little company visibility. Um, it does go outside of my normal training style. And then last but not least, uh, I do wanna say, you know, thank you to my mother uh, who's online here. The reason why I do the promotion fundraising things I do is just, you know, they touch my heartstrings. Um, you know, the, the women's, uh, or is that child, child abuse and domestic violence. My mother raised me phenomenally it just really hits home, you know, when I have two children and you just think about all the kids that don't have positive experiences at home. And then I, you know, women or men, domestic violence that don't have a safe place at home. And, and that's just what personally I've just, it really just touches my heartstrings and I look at my little babies and um, I'm just very thankful that I was raised very well and I'm able to translate that to, that to that to my children too. So anyhow, that's why I do what I do and thank you. We were. We're almost like at $500 on our way to a $1,000 goal. You don't have to do the fundraising stuff. Uh, just you know, help spread the word. Anyhow, uh, let's get to work. We have a warm-up loop we're gonna do, just a quick warm-up. I need your joints ready, I need your muscles ready, I need your hearts ready, I need your lungs ready, but it's a brief warm-up. And then we have six six-minute timed circuits. Uh, and why, am I vol why is my volume up? I'm trying to give you guys some energy. So quick warm up, and then we're gonna talk about things. It's, it's go day, it is a day to go. If you ever need to get off the call, just say goodbye and have a good day. Quick warm up loop, I need you ready to go. 10 regular squats, your feet are shoulder width apart, and I want a lot of hips, uh, I want a lot of booty. You guys know me well, I want a lot of eyes, and I want a lot of thighs. Your hips move a ton, 10 regular squats. Your glutes turn on. Your posture, right? You're looking out in front of you. And when I say the word thighs, I want you to think about your legs, not your back, right? It's a leg exercise, not a back. 10 regular squats, 10 stationary reverse lunges. This should sound familiar. I want your joints moving, low, lubricated, ready to go, ready to handle some impact. I want your muscles elongating and contracting. They need to be ready for some load. I want the heart rate to slowly come up. I want that blood to start pumping a little bit. 10 on your stationary reverse lunges. You got 10 on your standing scissors. You want to lengthen all of those posterior muscles, hamstrings, glutes, back, shoulders. You want to lengthen the things that you squat with, sit on, lunge with, and what your mama gave you, right? 10 standing scissors. Take a big deep breath, we're getting warm. I promise you a lot of work's coming your way. 10 wide squats. Your feet are simply wider than your regular squat. You should know this as a flexibility squat. Hips, 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 tons of movement. Glutes should always turn on. You've got that posture. And again, I want your legs moving a little bit. Heart rate comes up. 10 wide squats. 10 alternating, balancing, lengthening, stiff, woo, legged deadlifts. It is not a stretching exercise. It is a lengthening exercise. You're lengthening your contracted hamstrings and glutes. And if you ever hold more weight, you should technically have more contraction. 10 alternating, stiff, legged deadlifts, balance component, coordination component. Standing runners, you're definitely now getting into that mobility territory. Your joints are gonna move a little bit more. You've got rotation, you've got activation, you're breathing, you're working. Again, we're moving that body on your 10 standing runners. This should sound familiar, right? This should be good. Narrow squats, feet are inside the width of your hips. They are narrower than your regular squat. This is a mobility squat. And again, if you keep your motion compared to your regular squat. 10, narrow squats. Your toes should always be able to wiggle. I don't want your toes up. I don't want you on your heels. I want you pushing to the flat of your feet. 10 on your narrow squats. You're then gonna have 10 stationary forward lunges. Step, 
load and push. Now, everybody's on here because they do either kind of know me or they know me really well. This warm-up should sound familiar. We're getting ready for our day. And unfortunately, a lot of warm-ups and hard workouts do involve your legs. So that's why we're getting ready to go. 10 stationary forward lunges. And then you're on your 10 jack lanes. You gotta get big. And then you gotta get down and cross that body. This is a stretching exercise. It's a dynamic, multi-joint, multi-muscle stretching exercise. 10 jack lanes. Nice and big, please. Alrighty, now simple, right? That's a simple, good warm up. Maybe it turned your brain on or brain off and body on. Today's workout is timed. And a lot of time, or 100% of the time, when I bring out a timer, people think I want them to go faster, I want more. Well, today that's true. <laughs> but what I don't want you to do is do your motion too crazy fast. It's gonna be 45 seconds on, so you're gonna work hard for 45 seconds, 15 seconds off, and that way you can make your adjustment, grab your sip of water, right, get back on it. The nice thing is we're gonna do things in three packs. So three rounds, three rounds, three rounds, and there's up to six circuits. And if I stop talking, you're about 39 minutes away from being done, okay? When you're ready, circuit one is gonna be your non-alternating legs. You can do regular squat, you can do wide squat, you can do narrow squat. Weight is optional, optional on your squats. So any squat, regular, wide, or narrow. Your combo is either split jumps, if you're able to handle the load impact. You can do split squats if you want to do that, or you've got your lateral skater hops. So this circuit, 45 seconds of squats, 45 seconds of exertion. We've got three rounds. The timer is gonna barely stop the rest of the way, but we do have little things between our circuits. Ready, you're on your squats. Ready, set, go. Alrighty, I didn't say we're going to squat fast. The timer is going. You've got regular squats, weight is optional. You've got wide squats. You've got narrow squats. We just did some of these on our warm up. I don't want you to change them as much as I'm changing them. I just want you to see the difference. Weight is up under chin on your regular squat and your wide squat, or sorry, narrow squat. If you do the wide squat, the weight is down. We do have three rounds coming your way. If you ever need to take a couple extra seconds, take a couple extra seconds. You've got five seconds and you got a 15 second break. Two, one, and breathe. Now that's set one of many, 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 many sets. Your next thing is again, either split jumps, you can do split squats or skater hops. Ready, set, go. Now I don't want 100 reps. I want 45 seconds of non-stop work. I promised you a very huge, hard, sweaty day today. You are gonna burn about 15 calories a minute, probably at a minimum today. And of course, a nice good 40 minute workout. You can do the math later on. You have earned yourself an extra glass of wine. You've earned yourself leftovers later on. Nice, hard work. And for those of you that know me, we're doing non-alternating legs squats with alternating exertion. And relax. That's round one of three. Big deep breath, right? Big deep breath. We're not moving too fast. We're just gonna barely rest. Three, you're back to squats. Two, one, go. You're back to your squats. You've heard the phrase active recovery. What the heck does that mean? It means you're able to sustain movement. You're gonna keep exercising, but you're gonna go high and then you bring it down. You slow down those squats. You only have 45 seconds of them, so you can slowly recover. Hips, 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 glutes, 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 eyes, 
I want you to look out in front of you. Don't look down. Don't look up. And when I say the word thighs, it is a leg exercise, not a back exercise. You got your squats in three, two, one, and breathe. Again, split jumps, split squats, skater hops. This is round two of three. Six different circuits. Three, two, one, go. If you have a hard time with impact, right, you could slow it down and laterally step. If you have a good easy time and you can handle impact nice and big and wide, and that is a lateral skater hop. Again, split jumps. You've got the power, the plyometric, the load, and the impact. Split squats, you still have the load. You eliminated power, you eliminated impact. Let's go, baby. Let's burn that body a little bit today. We've been, we've been waiting for this day for a while, right? Three, two, one, and breathe. One more round of the squats and your exertion. This circuit, I wanted to bring it up. The next circuit, we're gonna bring it down a little bit, and then we're gonna bring it way up for a little while. Two, one, let's go. Squats, last time you're doing squats today. Hips, 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 glutes, 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 eyes, eyes, thighs. I want posture, I want breathing, quads, hamstrings. When you have a wide stance, you've got your outer quad, your bassus lateralis, your outer hamstring, your semi-tendinosis, your glute maximus, the big squeezable one, your glute minimus and medius are the posterior hip glutes. A lot of motion, a lot of breathing, a lot of posture. And of course, those of you guys that have been doing the online training, I educate you guys as much as you can be educated. Two, one, and breathe. Your last set of this type of exertion, I promise you there's a lot more. Skater hops, split jumps, split squats. In three, two, one, and let's go. Load, impact, power, exertion. That is a plyometric, right? Agility, which we'll be doing shortly, is a little less power. It still has some impact, and normally it's a smidge quicker. And agility and plyometric exercises get confused all the time. There's a lot more load, uh, power, and impact on a plyometric. Yes. Oh, baby. Come on. Come on. It's Thanksgiving. You are going to enjoy the rest of your day. You're going to pat yourself on the back when this thing is done. Two. One, relax, breathe, grab a quick sip of water, just a quick sip. The next circuit, push-ups. Ah, it's technically your only upper body today. You got legs straight push-ups, knees bent push-ups. Give me what you can give me on your push-ups, okay? Your combo is a hip motion ab. I'm gonna start the clock here in a second, and that is reverse crunches, V-ups, and again, I'll put hip ridges in an ab core. Okay, and starting in 10 seconds. Push-ups is what I want, like the squats. Your combo is reverse crunches, V-ups, or hip bridges. Two, one, let's go. Remember, today is a little bit outside of my normal style of training, right? Just a little bit. A touch more pace, good focus, but like you guys have all experienced, I want to give you a little energy, a little education, a little focus, a little breathing. Push-ups. Yes, it's a chest press. And people associate the push-ups with exercise and fitness and, and monotony, right? You're just, oh, push-ups. Slow it down. You can make push-ups harder by elevating your feet. A decline push-up will simulate an incline bar or dumbbell bench press. You can make your push-up easier. An incline push-up simulates a decline bench press. And relax, breathe, breathe, we're not in a hurry. You've got reverse crunches, both legs are moving. You've got V-ups, everything is moving. Or you can do hip bridges. Three, two, one, let's go. Reverse crunches, 
Abs tight, back flat. Lengthen your contracted abs. If you can't hold your body up, you can have your body down. You can have your hands under your buns if you need to have your back a little more flat. It's kind of a, a misnomer about your lower back being flat against the ground. Everybody has a different lordosis curve, which is a lower back curve. I just don't want your back to hurt. So it's either legs straight, you could have your knees slightly bent, you could cross your legs, you could really focus on the contraction of your abs, you can have your hands under your buns and relax and breathe, relax and breathe. You're back to your push-ups. If you have other tools like a chest press, feel free to do a chest press. Three, two, one, go. Push-ups for the second time of three times. Three set circuits, three rounds, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off, if you miss a couple seconds on the on, cool. Breathe, breathe. Push with your pecs. Minimal hands, minimal arms. Push with your pecs. 45 seconds of push ups is about 20 ish reps, right? 15 to 20. Legs straight, knees bent, hands up on something, feet up on something. You can mix up push ups a lot. Two, one, and relax. You can do reverse crunches again. I'm gonna talk about V-ups more on this round. You got reverse crunches, you've got V-ups, and you got hip bridges. Three, two, one, go. V-ups, legs straight, arms straight. You're either on the ground or a bench. Yes, if you need to, you can bend those legs a little bit. V-ups are a hard ab exercise. They're not the best ab exercise. And you've heard it a lot, you guys. It's a great gauge on how your fitness level is in general. How have you been feeling the last couple weeks and months? Have you been pretty active? Have you not been pretty active? It's a great gauge on how you're feeling today. Are you energized? Are you pumped? Are you tired and cranky? Posterior muscle flexibility anterior muscle activation, mobility of hips, mobility of spine, and relax and breathe. Look how quick 45 seconds is. So reverse crunch is hard, V-ups hard, breathing, focusing. We have one more round in three, two, one, let's go. It's your last set of push-ups today. You won't do them again. In fact, it was minimal upper body. Monday and Wednesday we had a fair amount of upper body. And then today I promised people you don't need a lot of equipment. Push-ups don't require very much. Again, legs straight, knees bent, shoulder blades move, push with your pecs. Breathe and focus on your chest. You're pushing. 10 more seconds on this chest pushing. We've got one more set of our hip motion, abs, core. That is two of our six circuits done. Relax. Last set of either reverse crunches and or V-ups and or hip bridges. I know hip bridges aren't abs, but it is glutes and core. Here we go. Here's your hip bridge, right? You can have your feet shoulder width. Remember, you don't have to do these if you don't want to. You can have your feet wider. You can have your feet narrower. You can have your feet up on something. You've got to maintain that motion. You can have a weight on your hips, right? You could load your hips, but hip bridges is a hip spine mobility exercise. You can get more glutes. You do get some core. Play around with your feet. You've got plenty of work coming your way. Reverse crunches, V-ups, hip bridges. Again, when this circuit's done, I'm gonna do a quick pause. Go ahead and stop. I'm gonna do a quick pause and talk about the next circuit. The next circuit, get your sip of water. If you've got any alternating leg, you can do stationary reverse lunge. You can do stationary forward lunge. 
You could do stationary lateral lunge. You could do alternating stiff legged deadlifts. You can do any alternating leg. Your combo is either jump squats, pulsating squats, or I know Caitlin came here for a reason, burpees. You can do burpees if you want to. Alrighty, you got alternating legs, 45 seconds on, and you've got different exertion. Two, one, let's go. You can hold weight if you want to, right? Weight is optional today. What I don't want you to do is alternating dynamic legs fast. I want this to be active recovery. Alternating stiff-legged deadlifts, hamstrings, glutes, balance. Alternating stationary forward lunges, quads, glutes, hamstrings, load, torque. Stationary reverse lunges, load, pulling, hamstrings, glutes, quads. And then you have that lateral lunge, step, load, and push on the lateral motion. Two, one, relax and breathe. Now set one of three. Reminder, you've got jump squats, load plyometric, pulsating squats, load not a plyometric, or burpees. Two, one, let's go, let's go. Now, I promise you guys lots of hard work. This is your third of six circuits. Burpees. I'm gonna get myself in trouble if there's other trainers on here. There is no such thing as a push-up in a burpee. If you can catch yourself low, awesome. It's a loaded eccentric component. If you can't catch yourself low, you catch yourself high. When millions of people started working out in the late 90s, which is the big jump in the fitness crate, everybody started doing burpees. And then everybody started having bad shoulders and elbows. Catch yourself low or catch yourself high on a burpee. And relax and breathe. Thank you, Nancy, for the pumpkin last night, pumpkin pie. This little mini pumpkin pie, handmade whipped cream. All righty, let's go. Alternating dynamic Legs, active recovery, stationary forward lunge, step, load, push yourself back, stationary reverse lunge, step, load, pull yourself up, stationary lateral lunge, step, load, push yourself back, alternating, balancing, lengthening, stiff, Legged deadlifts is a pulling yourself up exercise. Come on, baby. Active recovery. You are recovering a little bit. And relax. You're back to either jump squats, pulsating squats, or burpees. This is round two over three. Let's go. Let's go. Right, this is a little bit rare for us. Let's go. And go. Jump squats or squat jumps, whatever you want to call them. You got the squat component, right? Hips, glutes, eyes, thighs. You create power so it yields impact. Pulsating squats. You get down, you get dirty, you get funky. You still have the load, minimal power, minimal impact. I didn't say they're easy, right? You should have a nice good burn going on right now. Jump squats, pulsating squats, or burpees. And this is round two of our three rounds. Two, one, breathe, recover. Ooh, yes, we have one more round of our alternating dynamic legs. One more of this exertion, but we're gonna keep ramping it up. Let's go, let's go. Stationary lateral lunge. You are stepping, you are loading the stepping leg, and you push yourself back. Don't load the non-stepping leg and pull yourself up. I won't see you for a while. Not the best thing to do. Alternating, balancing, lengthening, stiff-legged deadlifts, 
hamstrings, glutes, and you do get a little quads because of the balancing component, but it's definitely a hamstring, glute exercise. It's just like stationary reverse lunges, you do, do get a little quads because the motion, but hamstrings, glutes, quads. Relax. One more set of jump squats, pulsating squats, or burpees. Come on, you guys, we're not done. We have so much more work to go. We're gonna ramp it up a little bit more. Two, one, let's go. Remember, today's mindset. You are burning the calories before you consume the calories. That's why you guys all showed up. Yes, get pulsating squats. I mean, yeah, they're not impact hard, but they do burn those legs and quads, especially because of the combo you just had. Jump squats, plyometric load, impact, power, burpees, right? They get such a bad rap. You catch yourself high or you catch yourself low. Yeah, I didn't say they're easy, but they're not as invasive. Breathe, you're halfway done. Right, we have three more circuits. The next circuit, I'll walk you through all the planks we can do. You're gonna plank for 45 seconds. Whether you do a static, non-moving plank, or you do a dynamic movement plank, and I'll talk about that. The combo is agility. You can do high knees, you can do butt kicks, you can do jumping jacks, or you can do taps. Whew. Are you ready? Here we go. Five seconds, three, two, one. Vamanos, muchachos. There is a regular plank, right? I am not moving. You guys have done this millions of times. You can mix in rotational planks, right? You've got 45 seconds. Do as you need to. You can do elevator planks, elbows to hands to elbows. You can do plank swimmers. You can hold a lateral plank, but you'd want to make sure you do get both sides of the lateral plank eventually. After your 45 seconds, which is nothing for you guys, you guys can do five minute planks sometimes. You're gonna do agility. Agility and plyometrics are similar. All right, breathe. You have 15 seconds. Reminder, high knees can be running or walking but they're called high knees for a reason. Get your knees up. Butt kicks is an option. Ready, go. Butt kicks is an option. Again, running or walking. Believe it or not, there's more exertion on the walking. Yeah, you don't have that momentum. Jumping jacks. I trained a lot of mamas. Walking jacks, a little less impact. You've got your taps, right? Something higher or something lower. I want you to do agility. Agility is a little quicker than plyometrics. Agility is a little bit less powerful than plyometrics. It still has some impact, but it's normally a little quicker. It's normally a little quieter. It's normally a little smoother. This is circuit four of your six circuits. Breathe, relax. Time flies. We so rarely do these short circuits. You've got your 45 second plank for the second time. You'll have your agility. Ready, go. Let's go. Come on, baby. A great time to actively recover. If you're not moving on your static plank, which is low plank, elbows and toes, or you have your high plank, hands and toes, Believe it or not, your body does turn on more in a low plank. However, your elbows and your shoulders might not like it the whole time. High planks are still great. I didn't say they're not good for you. Your body does work harder in a low plank. Again, you have rotational planks if you want to deviate out of your plank. And relax. See how short that is? 45 seconds on is nothing. Your next set of agility, high knees, butt kicks, jumping jacks, or taps. And 
let's go. Again, running revolutions, walking reps. Now you don't have to count them, right? You're doing time. Butt kicks. Wait, when we do these for reps or revolutions, different mindsets, jumping jacks or walking jacks, right? You've got your taps. Come on, tap me. You got those taps, quick and quiet. That is your mindset on agility. It's a little quicker, it's a little quieter. And this is circuit four of your six circuits. Nothing will imbalance you if you have to leave. Three, two, one, breathe. We have one more plank. You'll have one more agility. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Woo, I'm gonna hot in my hat. Three, two, one, let's go. Elevator planks is an option, right? You're going from a low plank to a high plank. And it's not about doing 45 movements, it's about doing 45 seconds of movements. Mix up your lead hand occasionally. You don't have to do it a lot. You've got your plank swimmers. If you're in a low plank, your body does work harder in the position, but a high plank does have more balance and stability. Oh, baby, come on. Two, one, relax, breathe. One more set of agility, and we're gonna do a quick pause before we do that last circuit, or sorry, fifth circuit. Oh my goodness, you guys. Five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Jumping jacks, walking jacks, right? They're, they're similar, there's a width of the exercise. One has a little more impact, one's a little less. High knees, get your knees up, butt kicks, get your feet back. You got your taps, something quick, something simple, something quiet, and okay, keep working, keep working. And again, a lot of my clients, you're used to that 45 to 60 minutes. Some people are used to the 20 to 30 minutes. Nothing's gonna imbalance you if you need to leave, and I get it. Three, two, one, breathe. Grab a quick sip of water. Ah, yes, let's go baby, let's go. Next circuit, you've got sit-ups or you can do toe touches. Your upper body is moving on to your lower body. Sit-ups or toe touches. You can lay on a ball if you wanna do ball sit-ups. You can lay on the ground or bench if you wanna do sit-ups or toe touches. Your combo is either scissors, runners, or you've got swimmers. So your combo is upper body motion ab with your alternating abs core. So here comes a ton of abs and core. You can be done when this circuit's done or there's one more to go. Three, two, one, let's go. Now I didn't say we're doing 45 sit-ups. We're doing 45 seconds of sit-ups. Sit-ups are a little bit bigger and you guys have heard it a million times. Play around with your legs and your feet. Your legs can be straight, your knees can be bent, your feet can be wide, your feet can be narrow. You can have one leg bent, one knee bent, right? You can switch them off. You can lay on a bench, ball or ground. Sit-ups, again, people like push-ups. Oh, I do sit-ups all the time. Guaranteed you don't play around with where your legs are. Legs straight, knees bent, feet wide, feet narrow. Mix it up. Two, one, relax, breathe. Reminder, you can do scissors, legs straight, arms straight, runners, elbows and knees, or swimmers on your hands and knees or laying on your stomach. Two, one, go. Sit-ups. When I use the word abs, or somebody says they wanna do their abs, you've got sit-ups, toe touches, reverse crunches, hanging abs, jackknives, right? The abs, rectus abdominis. When people say core, you've got scissors, runners, swimmers, 
windshield wipers, Russian twists. You've got a million weight displacement tools with cables and bands. Core is anything that touches your spine. And guess what? Your abs don't touch your spine. It's part of the equation by all means, but the muscles that touch your spine are your core muscles. We need to move them, use them, activate them. Two, one, breathe. This combo is gonna be very challenging on your abs. I don't want your back, I want your abs and core. You're back to your sit-ups and toe touches. Two, one, go. Remember, you can change your body position on sit-ups. You could lay on the ground. You could lay on a ball. You could lay on a bench. Your upper body is moving on to your lower body. You could have your legs straight, knees bent, one leg straight, one leg bent. Feet wide. You can have your feet narrow. Upper body is moving on to your lower body. When I say sit-ups, toe touches, you are shortening the muscle with the position and you're shortening the muscle with the exercise. A lot of people say, oh, toe touches are easy. Well, slow them down and maximize the motion. Then they won't be so easy. Two, one, breathe. You got 15 seconds. Scissors, runners, swimmers, and uh, yeah, those three. You could do horizontal scissors if you really want to. We did some the other day. That's why I didn't talk about them. Two, one, go. So again, you have your vertical scissors. If you want, you've got horizontal scissors. A lot of times when I say scissors, I actually see that by people. Runners is elbows to knees. I personally don't like bicycles. That's just me, my personal opinion. Swimmers, you can be on your hands and knees. You could be laying on your stomach, upper back, middle back, lower back, glutes, spine mobility, hip, mobility, muscle activation. Again, this is round two of this fifth circuit. If you get done with time, you can be done after this. If not, there's one more circuit. And relax, one more set of abs, sit-ups or toe touches. Again, I want you to think about abs as rectus abdominis, and then you have the one more core, scissor runner swimmer. Two, one, let's go. Sit-ups, and or toe touches. Your upper body is moving on to your lower body. Your lower body is not moving when I say upper body motion abs. Play around with where your legs are. There are so many changes. As long as your legs aren't moving, you can put them in different spots and your upper body moves on your lower body. And again, you better be burdened by this round. I don't care who you are and how many abs you do, you better be burdened. Two, one, and relax. You've got the one more scissor, runner, swimmer combo. And then we have one more circuit of wall sits and calves. Woo, one more circuit. Two, one, go. Again, scissors. Legs straight, arms straight, torque, leverage on your vertical scissor, isometric weight displacement and horizontal scissors. You have the isometric ab, non-moving contraction, and then you have the weight displacement with your legs and horizontal scissors is a core exercise. Runners, mobility of hips, spine, and knees. You can start from the down, you can start from the up. The up position has more of an eccentric component. I don't want to say they're better for you, but you have the isometric start with an eccentric component. Again, a little education for you. Two, one, relax, breathe. Again, if you ever need to leave, just say goodbye and have a wonderful day. We have one more circuit if you've got it in your body. Wall sits, you can play with your feet with, and then you've got your calves. We can hold a weight or not. I'm gonna use the word simple. We only have three rounds of wall sits and calves and you're done. You've earned everything you're gonna to do today. All righty, we're starting in 10 seconds. Wall sits can be regular, wide, or narrow. Right, play with your feet and then your calves. Two, 
One, we are now starting the final circuit. When you're doing your wall sit, head against the wall, shoulders against the wall, back against the wall, butt against the wall, cool. What I want, 90 degree angle at your hips, 90 degree angle at your uh, knees, 90 degree angle at your ankles, unless you're doing seated calves, which works your soleus, the underneath calf muscle. You could do it isometrically, not moving. You could do them concentrically, moving. So you could be doing a super set of calves if you wanted to. Seated calves or knees bent calves is different than a leg straight calf, your gastrox. Two, one, and relax. Again, you could hold something or not. Your feet could be a little bit wide, they could be a little bit narrow. You've got your calves, you could stand against the stairs or a two by four or a plate. Here we go, calves. Maybe you're able to get more motion if you stand on the edge of something. Again, you can play around your feet with a little bit. I hear it all the time, toes in and toes out. If you do a lot of calves and you want your calves to be off the charts, then yeah, you can play around with where the toes point. If you don't do calves very often, it really doesn't matter that much. Ankle motion is your calves. Easy, breezy, let's go. We are literally almost done, you guys. A nice, smooth, simple finish to an otherwise fairly challenging, very high paced day, which is kind of abnormal for my style of training. Similar components, different pace. Two, one, relax. Again, this is gonna feel a little more simple. Wall sits, you got regular width, shoulder width apart, wide, narrow. You could sneak in calves or not. Two, one, breathe, home stretch. Home stretch, again, head against the wall, your body's against the wall, but what I want, and for you to do in the future, 90 degree angle at your hips, your knees, and your ankles, unless you're doing some calves. You can annihilate your calves this circuit if you wanted to do seated calves and straight-legged calves to go with your isometric leg exercise, which is the second greatest force you put on a muscle, a non-moving contraction. We, of course, did our squats, our lunges per se, right? You had all that exertion. We had agility, plyometrics, minimal up body, and relax. You're back to your straight legged calves. This is round two of the three and you're done. You're so close. Focus, you're not done yet. Let's go. Calves, legs straight. Standing on the edge of something, stand on a two by four or a box, your stairwell. I wouldn't recommend a human being, but you could have your partner be in a plank and you could stand on the side of them. I would love the video of that. Gopal and Krishna, that could be a fun, challenging Thanksgiving thing to do later on. After the eggnog kicks in, of course. <laughs> Again, you could be destroying your calves this circuit. I know it sounds corny to do calves at home when you don't have a machine. Seated calves is your soleus, your underneath flat calf, your gastroc, the bubble, the one you see, that happens on your leg straight. Relax, we have one more round. Please have a good day. Please let me know if you like this or not. I'm not here to sell you on something. Please go donate if you can to whatever charity you want. Last ball sit. Be a little thankful. I know we've all had an interesting year, but uh, at the end of the day, I got my healthy babies. I got a beautiful gym. Got a wonderful mother. She's the reason why I'm such a nice, wonderful, kind human being. <laughs> uh, I do crack myself up. Last round of your wall sits, isometric leg exercise with your last set of your calves. You had a nice, smooth warm-up. You get, did your squats with some exertion. You did your push-ups with some hip motion abs core. You did your lunges with some more exertion. You got your planks with your agility, right? We did a lot of work today. Relax, one more set of calves. And you know my rule, don't push the off button and go run and take a shower or sit down. I know you're not gonna go to work. 
cool off for a couple minutes. If you have time to stretch, stretch, right? Last thing, calves. You know, just don't turn it off and go about your day. Go cool off for a second. Go pat yourself on the back. You came, you saw, you conquered, you defeated. Last thing, smooth day, hard working day, high pace. For those that are used to shorter workouts, congratulations, that was a little bit longer, more intense. For those of you guys that have been doing all my strength training, today was a nice, good pace day. 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, relax, breathe. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for working so hard today. Mwah, mwah.